Our students, Brian Proctor, the art teacher, back again with another video, and I'm doing an intro on this one because I had an, an, a subscriber ask me, could I do a video on character interaction? So if you are doing a comic book, that's a, a, a very necessary thing because you're always going to have characters interacting with each other. So I am showing you the way I do it. I don't really think there's a manual on how to uh, do character interactions, but if somebody asked me how would I explain it, this is how I would explain it, okay? So I cannot say if this is wrong or right, but this is how I follow it. And I think a lot of it makes pretty good sense. So if you follow the steps, then you might be doing a better job of character interaction. So on that note, let's go to the drawing table and I'll show you the best way I can on how to do character interactions. Let's go. All right, character interaction. Now, once again, this is how I see it in my head. This is how I would interpret it if somebody asked me to explain how to show and uh, do character interactions in comic books. So when two people interact, especially in comic books, it's either going to be you're happy or you're sad or you're mad. So one of the three things. So basically it's going to be about the emotions. So to show emotions, it's a lot of it is about camera angles. So, you know, you have the three camera angles. That's two, Brian. That's, that's three. You have your regular view where, you know, I'm standing here and you're standing here and we're both talking to one another. That's, you know, that's our regular view. We're, we're right here in the panel. You have your bird's eye view where the guy is, where the camera is above two people talking. You're looking down on these people and you have your worm's eye view which is where the camera is real low to the ground and then you have the person you know or the two people that are high above you and actually that's going to be the opposite way this is going to be small this is going to be tall like that you're down here and maybe the other person is back here and they're talking everything's gonna be rounded off because you're you're below you're below so panel so now you have your three views or your three angles now each one has a bit of a, a meaning to it so let's take this high above this right here you're high above you're floating up here or you're you're on a ledge and you're kind of like looking down at the people you don't you know you're not involved you're not involved in their conversation so whatever happens, I mean, these guys can be mad as hell at each other and about the power and powering up and about the fight. But that has nothing to do with you because you're not involved. You're way up here above this. So nothing can really hurt you because you're above it all. You're looking down on the chair like that third person observing the conversation or the action or whatever. You have this one down here where you're on the ground. Now, usually this one. When you're down, it kind of makes you feel small, or it does make you feel small because you have these people tower, towering, towering above you, which gives you that small look or that, that fear. He can hurt me because, you know, I'm like this little ant down here, and these guys can hurt me at any time. And then you have this one here, which is just, you know, you, you're right there with them. You're just kind of like listening. You could be like coaching them or whatever, just listening to whatever they have to say. You are in it because you're right there. You're, you're, you're just like up close and in it. So whatever happens, you're probably going to get involved. So you use one of these three to help with, to bring that mood for your interacting scenes. All right, now you also have your camera views, not so much up, down, but being close, you know, or far away or medium. So again, let's just say here's your medium, here's your medium shot here. And these guys are close up and they're, they're talking to one another. It's like, hey, you know, did you see the game last night? He's like, oh man, that was the, the stupidest game. Or you have your far away shot. So you can have this guy here. And you can have this guy here. Uh, 
and then you can have your super close-up shots. Let's just say this. And this is like a behind the behind the head kind of shot right here. You know, your really close-up shots like that. So they also convey meaning as well and that's the one thing that you want when you have your interaction you want to be able to tell the reader what's going on even without words so when when you when you combine any of these six together you will make a readable what's the word I'm looking for emotional kind of um, interaction that's that's the word I'm looking for so you have to kind of combine um, any one of these now I don't know what it is that you are trying to convey at any point if you if it's somebody like two people are, are angry is going to get ready to fight or if they haven't seen each other in a while or if it's just some they just wake up and you know they're sitting in the office and talking so that's on you but once you learn to combine the six and put them together you'll have a real 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 what <laughs> you have a real winner so I can get the words out of my mouth all right, so let's take an emotion, for instance. Let's let's just say two people are chilling and just in, you know having just you know basic conversation. And I'll put these two up here so that I can be able to choose from. So if I and this is me personally, if I'm having you know, a conversation with two two people just talking, I would probably not. You can you can you can use the far off. You can use the medium shot. And if it's a just chilling shot, I wouldn't use this. This is more, this is going to bring out some emotion because you're up in the person's face. So you're seeing his expressions because you just got close. Here, you know, you can say, oh, did you see the game last night? Oh, yeah, that was pretty good. You know, I like the way he, you know, caught that ball. Same thing here. I would not do an above shot because that's, <clears throat> like I said, that's too impersonal. And it's just like, to me, this would be more like a, a face-off. I mean, you can put like a third person right here. And it just, it still seems like a, a kind of a, um, a not a good angle for a, a, a conversation, uh, a regular conversation. This is, to me, this is more like serious, maybe it's like secretive you know, like, uh, oh, we're getting together and we're talking about, you know, how to blow up, you know, some building. And um, you're above it and you're, you're hearing it, but they don't know that you're, you're hearing it because you're way above them. Definitely wouldn't use the lower one because, as I said, that one instills like more fear because you're nobody. You're just this little teeny ant amongst these giants who are, are talking about something. But usually this, this scene kind of indicates more it indicates power number one so usually if i'm talking about the football game we're not talking you know we're not considering a power scene we're just having a regular you know joe on joe conversation so i would go between this one or as a this one and probably this one so if i'm just chilling i'd have more of a medium shot unless i wanted to show the room if they're in some kind of um living room or uh, the secret base or something and I wanted to show the base then I would go for more of the medium shot so let's just say I'll, I'll do this which is you know this is really like unnecessary to draw the whole thing because more of speech is more what you need right now so these guys are you know they're, they're talking this guy's like got his hands in his pocket and he's like explaining, you know, what's going on. And here is, you know, the secret base behind him is some computer stuff, monitors, and maybe his like little chair and uh, whatever, big window, more stuff over here that would be more like this. So that would be the only reason that I would show a pullback shot like that, a far shot, is if I needed to show whatever base they were in. And 
and that's more of an establishing shot anyway when you first when you first um I don't want to say when you first open up the book, but you need an establishing shot so that the reader will understand, okay, where is this all taking place at? Whether it's you, you start out the shot or the, the, the scene, he's in the bathtub, or he's you know standing on the edge of a building about to jump. So mm -hmm. once you have your establishing scene, then the rest can be close-ups. You don't always have to have backgrounds. You can have this, this, you know, you can, what am I pointing to? You can't see it. You can have this, this without background because you already know these guys are like in the bathroom. You know that you don't you don't have to show the toilet unless you want to. You know some of those great artists always continue to put you know um, background in their scenes. What is it? That's a, that would be the toilet lid. This would be the back of the toilet. And see the top of the toilet. Maybe a mirror back here. So you don't have to because number one, when you're doing your dialogue, when the closer you are the less room you have for dialogue. So you're gonna chop up a lot of um, your background. Here, kind of the same thing, depending on how, you know, how much these guys have to say, you're gonna chop up your background. So that's why one reason why you don't have to be a stickler on background, but when you do do background, you need to do it. Same thing here. So between this one and just the medium shot, this is what I would go for. if I, if I'm doing something where they're just you know having a conversation, having a conversation. Hey, you know, I um went to this restaurant and uh, you know new restaurant they opened up and they have the greatest coffee. And this guy is like, oh yeah, I just came from there yet yeah, um, you know a few minutes ago and this is a cup that I brought you know because it tastes really good so. You know, that's your, your basic conversation. You're, you're not close up. You're not far away. You're kind of like in medium, medium shot, medium range, you know, and it's comfortable. You're not too high. You're not too low. You're just kind of like right there where actually you can join them and, you know, you can put a third person in there and he come in a room and he's like, hey, hey, is that the new cup of coffee from, you know, Mary Jo's coffee house down the street? You know, it's all good. You know, nothing to worry about, nothing to get all intense about. So that would be more your basic conversation. Now, if you want to do like uh, anger, now to do anger, it's usually gonna be close up or maybe um, above, you wanna show that power that these guys, but I wouldn't do the power too much. I mean the power, I wouldn't do an upshot too much in anger. I would stick with more of um, between the medium and the close-up, more close-up, but if you do, let's just say one where you have the two people, and then body language plays a whole lot to it too. You can't have somebody just standing up, let's just say like this, and I keep switching back and forth, and thank you camera. You can't have people just, you know, standing straight up, just, you know, in a chill position. If I'm angry at you, I'm going to lean in towards you like this, maybe like, you know, you use my credit card, you ran my bill up, you know, something like that. You'd have to, you'd have to give him that little angle, but you don't want to do close up, not close up, um, profile. And this guy's like, I didn't use your credit card. I would do more of uh, close up, and remember, as I say, once you get the the, the, the closer your um, pictures are, or the bigger your, your your characters are, the less room you have for your dialogue. So you need to do your dialogue first, or you need to know what your dialogue is before you start to draw the picture. Because this guy could be like, "I didn't take your credit card. Mary Jo took your credit card. I saw her the other day. She was buying a new dress." And it didn't fit, so she took it back, but her friend was there, and she gave her some money, and then she bought some milk for the baby. So you're, you're using all of this um, space for your dialogue, dialogue, and then you have no room for your picture because you use a really close-up shot of two people arguing. So for something like that, I would pull back. Where's my little pullback? Where's my little pullback? I'm getting too many papers here. Where'd the paper go? 
Eh, I would use the pullback, but I wouldn't have the background in it because the background at that point does really does not matter because it, what matters is all this, what he's saying. So I would use something like this and then um, give me enough room for dialogue because that, that's very important. You know, you got to know what you're saying, but if they're just gritting on each other, you know, then you can just do something like this without the dialogue. You know, if it's just like, you know, then you're good to go. So you can also alter the angles. Now this is another good one for being angry, but the problem is you'd have to keep switching um, faces. It's like the camera's here. You'd have to turn the camera around to the other side to get the back of that guy's head. You have to rotate it. You have to continue to figure out how to rotate that camera so you can see your people. And if you look, that's one of the hard things to do. If you see like a battle scene between two characters, uh, and then, you know, like on a cover, you want to see both characters' faces. I'm trying to figure out just some crazy little poses. I don't, I don't know, crazy little poses just to do like a battle scene. These guys attacking one another. You usually see a lot of profiles, but what they'll end up doing is they'll do like a three quarter view with it instead of just being a straight profile they do a three-quarter view on both characters so they can get both the faces in now realistically if i'm going to run in and fight you i'm not going to turn my body to the side a little bit you know to give a three-quarter view but they have to in order to show the faces and that was something whenever i drew covers I couldn't understand why my covers wouldn't come out like these guys until I really started looking at how they, they profiled them or they, they actually angled them. They were always coming at each other, but you always see the three-quarter view like that so you can see the faces of the heroes. Realistically, you would if, you, if you're facing off with somebody, it's going to be, it's going to be a serious, serious um, profile. You won't do nothing, but you, you have to show, like I said, you have to show the, the costumes and you have to show the characters' faces, you know, so, yeah, that's just that's just how it is. So, what was I saying? Anger, if I'm doing a, <clears throat> an angry pose and these guys are not about to face off and fight, I would do a medium shot. Oh, now you want to blur on me. That's okay. I'd do a medium shot of the two maybe leaning into each other. It, it all depends on your conversation. So to show that I'm angry, and depends on how much dialogue, remember, depends on how much dialogue, depends on how big your characters are going to be in that frame. So if he had a lot of dialogue, I would have him probably about like this, and he's like leaning into this guy, you know, ready to, to throw that punch or whatever, or accusing him. But if it, it, did, it didn't have a, a lot of dialogue, I would have, you know, as big as you want to, like, you know, you're wrong, like that. Yeah, I know it looks like these guys are, you know, he's looking here and he's looking there. But I'm just saying, you know, just like two words, you can have it as big as you want. You can have the other guy right here, you know, face to face. You can do three quarter view, but it's kind of, it, it's, when, once you, when you start studying it, it's kind of weird to have people three quarter views, you know, uh, talking to one another. I'm to find a thing here. You know, and. I'm mad at you. And we both are in that three quarter view position. You know, accusing each other. Wow, how does that go? Yeah, so it, it needs to be face to face, but depending on the size of your dialogue determines the size of your figure in your panel. Uh, angry, angry, angry. Okay, now the upshot, as I said, during the upshot, the bad part about the upshot is, again, you're having, you know, the person, you're having the person, you're not seeing the person, one guy's face, you're not seeing his face. The other guy, you know, you, you see his face. And that's more upset, but it's not, a, a, what's, what's what I'm trying to say? It's not extreme because the camera angle is down here. 
So as long as you round them off, then you're good to go. Again, you won't be showing that person's face unless he's not saying anything. Then you can bring him a little higher. You know, you can bring him as depending on how much body you want to see. And this guy, I would lean him down a little bit more depending on, you know, what he's doing. If he's kind of rushing the guy. But this is not a drawing tutorial. All right, so let's talk about fear. Now, fear is usually when you're trapped. Uh, or should I say to convey fear? It's more like when you're trapped, you can't get away. This thing is about to happen. Now, that's that's when you show more of your, your upshot. Like, you would never show... Um, this if somebody's afraid because as I said you're 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 way above them you know so how can you be afraid of something that can't touch you but if you're down like this then you know it, it gives you more of that that kind of a fear look so if I did somebody and to do an upshot everything has to be round the belt, you know, all of that, that shows that you're looking up at the, the character. And then you could be like down here on the ground, or this person would be down here on the ground, but he would be looking down if, if, it's, if it's somebody. Just bring the chin down into the chest and the eyes down. And then you have that menacing I'm tower, towering, I don't know what is it with some of these words, ing, the ings, towering, Synthes, synthesize, that's one word I can't say two or three times, Synthes, synthesize, how did you lose focus and get into the word saying, what are we talking about, we're talking about fear, now the closer you bring the person or the, the more, um, What was I saying? The more, the more tower, towering, there it goes again, towering above the person, the more towering you draw, I'm not going to say that word, that you draw the person above something, the more fear it is. Also, your panels have a lot to do with stuff. Say like, if I did this, this panel like this, let's just say that's you down on the ground for whatever reason, maybe you got hit or, or, um, Whatever, yeah, say so like you got hit and you got knocked to the ground. So by doing this tight panel like this, that kind of shows that you have nowhere to run. This guy is, he is um, taking up all the space for you to escape. You cannot escape, you know, you can't escape here. There's no room. There's very little room right here for you to just try to jump up and run. Versus if I had a panel, let me erase this. If I had the panel way out here somewhere, you know, you could always get up and run out because whatever. Say, like, I put a doorway right here. Here's a doorway, and the door's open right there. You know, you're not afraid if this guy comes in, you're going to be like, I'm out the door. So by making a tight, narrow panel and filling it up with the bad guy, then that is... Of fear. Let's get this guy down. Like, and he's got his hand. He's got his hand. You know, at the doorway, blocking. He's the monster, or he's the the big guy. Bring his panel all the way down, right here. And he's like, cropping his head to come in, and he's got that crazy smile. Like, yeah, your tail is mine, boy. And then, you know, you could be, like I say, if he's above you, bringing you down small is a good way to, that instant fear. So this guy is like, there's no escaping here because this guy is, 
he is like right there in that whole panel. You could just, if that's a doorway or whatever, but this guy is here. With his hands there, that would be a doorway. But yeah, he's got his hands right there at the panel. Maybe he's got some fists. His fists are like, yeah, ready. I'm ready for you, player. I'm ready for you. So yeah, using your panels also can create um, a sense of emotion. Also, again, when you have like your small characters and long panel, you know, there's, there's really nothing to fear because you have plenty of room to maneuver, plenty of room to escape, and it, it, everything is like neat and in order. So, you know, you, you're chilling. Now, if it was something like impending danger, let me say this, the fear, you're trying to install, instill fear, and you, want, you needed a long panel, or it calls for a long panel, let's just say the place was, you know, it was blowing up and it was hoses, you know, they're coming apart and wires everywhere sparking and there's fire and, um, you know, the ground is tore up and this guy's like, eh, lean him back a little bit. He's got his hands on his head. He's like, oh my God, what's happening? I can't, I can't get out of here like that. You know, then, yeah, but this is more of a background. You sh you're showing that everything that was there fell apart or is falling apart and he has no, you know, no... He has no control. And maybe the other guy's like laying down here. He's dead. You didn't kill them already. And it's like, you know, I killed my friend, you know, and the whole place is like falling apart and there's smoke everywhere and more fire and, you know, whatever, birds flying and, you know, trees falling, whatever. So, yeah, the, <laughs> but this is another long dialogue possibly but it's more of your background shot that you, you needed to see that this guy was in some room that's causing you know turmoil so your next shot would be more of a, a close-up again close-up is the fear his sorrow you know he, he's sorry for you know killing his friend but then you know there's fire and there's smoke in the background you know, that, that's, that, that causes a little bit of fear as well. Okay, what am I going to do now? I'm just going to die because I killed my friend. You know, I'm so sad. Yeah. All right, so I'm looking at this one um, shot here. And for those who don't really know how to do an upshot, think about a pole with stripes around this pole. So if you're looking at this pole right here, you just you just walk up on this pole and you're looking at it. And then you kind of like lay down on the ground and looked up at it. These stripes would number one, the pole would go go more like this. It would go like that. And I think everybody probably knows that. And your stripes would be if I'm here, if my eye is here. And I'm looking, this one stripe is going to be right here. And as, as they go up, they're going to start to turn more and more and more and more and more like that. So if you, the, 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 the what am I saying? The more harder the, the, the turns are, the more higher or the more, yeah, the more higher that would be. So if I did a pole like this, well, so let's give it more because it wouldn't work on that one. So like, like this, you're getting these higher and you don't have to be on the ground with it because a lot of times a bird's eye view, you know, you don't really see the ground too much. A bird's or worm's eye view, you don't see the ground too much. Like that. And you just think about that when you're, you're doing a person, let's just say I'm going to do, this is going to be my person. You start out with this and you're going to do your person. So... Let's just say this is going to be the shoulders. I'm going to put the head right here. This is going to be the torso. This is going to be like the tuna can right here. This is going to be the waist right here. And that's still going to be the upside down house. It's still going to be like that, but you're going to see more under here. You're going to see more underneath the man junk. And then you're going to have the legs here and the same thing with the legs. So if you take that, that um, the basis for doing this, Pole that's going upside down keep your lines keep your curves same way with this 
circle is a circle, your cylinder, your cylinder, and then your hands. Then you on your way to doing your upside, your upside down, your upshots, up angles. So just do this. And you really won't see shoulders because the shoulders are rolling back uh, on the guy or on the character. And the chest would come down. The chest would also be a curve like that. Your abs would be curved as well. Going around, as I say, your belt would be curved. This you'd see you'd see more bottom than that. So the legs could be more like this. And you have to, as you come down, it's better to draw wider. Not necessarily, but you know, when something goes really high, then it, you, you have to draw a little wider at the bottom and more narrower at the top without trying to like overdo it. And of course, if the if the face if you do your head, if you're if he's looking, if he's looking like out into the distance and you're up under him, you're gonna see this this little U here for your for your chin, and then your neck like that, and you're gonna you have more chin. You see more chin. You have the mouth at the top of that chin, the top of the bottom, the, the top mouth, top the lip. What are you trying to say, Brian? The nose would be more of a V. Not a V, that's a triangle. And the eyes would be just above that, curving around like that too. So, and when usually when I do an upside, a head shot like that up, I will drop the eyes down a little lower. I'll have this pencil, the shadow. This pencil did not work from here. No, the pencil's not working. Come on, now I'm trying to do a video. Go up like that. Then I'll have the eyes just below that. Because that's that um, sink in your head. Nostril, nostril, get that. And you'll, you'll see the bottom lip like that. And you'll see some chin here coming down. This is your cheekbone here and here. So this is going to this is going to sink in right here. It's going to come out and it's going to go in. It's going to sink in. Here, it's sink in at the eye, come out and goes in. And you won't have as much of a forehead. And that depends on, um, what was I going to say? It depends on your hair, you know, if you're having hair on it or a mask or something like that. And then, of course, your ears are going to go down. here and then because as I said you have your your chest is going to be right here and you really won't see that much shoulder but if he's looking down you will bring instead of having this like that what I just showed you you will bring this chin down close to his collarbone Like that, and not show so much neck, neck, and then you, of course, you're gonna curve the eyes and the nose and the mouth because he's looking down at you. So that's just a quick, quick, um, quick um, thing. And you put the hair on however you, your hair is. So yeah, I just because I, I was staring at this, and I was saying some people might not know how really how to draw an upshot, and it depends on how. What's the, what's the, the, how, how hard the angle is going to be. You don't always need, you know, hard, hard angles, but yeah, that, that just instills a little fear because this guy's more powerful than you. It's going to be a fight. You got a fight on your hands. And again, if you narrow the room or narrow the, um, your space, it shows that you can't get away. And there was another one. What was the other one I was thinking of, 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 of? You have your fear, you have your just chill, and you have your anger. There was something else I was going to say. So, you know by size of your panels, lost it for a second, that that also can 
convey a feeling. You also know that depending on how much dialogue you have, you have to adjust your character to fit that. Unless you just want to chop off, you know, a lot of your drawing. And I've done that before. I've done, done some real good stuff, background stuff, and I shaded it and, you know, like just, you know, every little line and every little thing and sparks and stuff coming from the wires and, you know, cracked glass and just, I, I, I had somewhere had the background so good. Then I realized I had to go and I cover all that stuff up just for uh, dialogue's sake. So that's something you have to think about. Do a rough sketch first. Do your rough, keeping in mind your dialogue. Let's say here's my panel. Here's my red pencil. Here's my panel. Here's my guy here. Let's just do something, whatever. Here's my guy here. And there's my guy in the panel and rough sketch. I put my dialogue in. I was like, okay, I got a lot of dialogue. So then I realized, okay, I got too much dialogue. You can't shrink the dialogue. You have to have your, your letters the same size throughout the book unless unless you want to. But I mean, maybe for a whisper or something like that. But you can't just like one, let's just say the dialogue is like size two in this panel. And the next panel, you take the dialogue down to size one, the letters down to, you know, size one. Here's the, here's the, the dialogue. In Brian and then you take it down here in the next panel and then the next panel you go back up you, you can't do that so that's just something you can't do so you're gonna have to say okay I got a lot of dialogue so let's take my character I don't want to but because of the dialogue that I cannot change I'll take my character and I'll shrink them down you know to where I can fit my dialogue which is why you always need to do your thumbnails Put your dialogue in, or put your word balloons in, uh, at the size, at the size, yeah, about the size you need. So you may have to do that. And then, because I made them so small, and the dialogue, as I say, stays the same. I might not want this white, uh, all this white background. So then I may be forced to put in just, you know, just a few lines, you know, some bushes outside or wherever he is, just a, just a few lines. You know, or some people will use color and they'll just do some lines or some, just some, you know, just some anything to kill that background. Okay, so breaking it down. Interaction, two or more people getting together on a panel talking about something. What is the, whatever the conversation, if it's, if it's, if it's anger, if it's just talking about the basketball game, if it's, you know, fear then it determines your size of your panel, the size of the characters you put in, you are putting in your panel, and the angle that you're going to put the camera at. And this is just sketching. I'm just, just keeping my hands busy, that's all. So you have to think about that. So when you look at some of these channels and they say, this is how you draw this. No, it's how you draw this for that. But it's not how you draw this. If I say this is how you draw fists, you know, you might not want a straight fist. You might want a fist with a little bit of angle. So I can't say this is how you draw a fist. This is how you draw a straight fist coming at you, period. Yeah, that, that's it. But as I said, you might not need that. You might need some, some, um, some extra part of the fist. You might need a little angle because it, maybe he's not coming straight at you. Maybe it's coming at you from, a, from, from an angle. You gotta twist these, bend these fingers in, and you might see a little bottom of a bat. So yeah, just when you see, like I say, a lot of people have said, "Oh, I've been searching for these video, video, a good channel to teach me how to draw," and a lot of the channels, and I'm not knocking them because it sounds like I am, but a lot of them are just like, "Oh, I'll teach you how to draw this, I'll teach you how to draw that, I'll teach you how to draw that," but they don't use the word depends, and that's something I always say. Because it depends on everything, your, your, your characters. How many characters are you going to have? 
you know, conversing. How many are going to be talking at the same time? Um, what are they talking about? What is the feeling? So you have to kind of get a grasp on all of this at the same time, not just, oh, this is how you draw fists. This fist is, you know, like this, and you want to draw this powerful fist, and it's like, no, I need to know, you know, a little bit more about this so that I can draw, you know, my things a little better. So that's what I try to teach you. I try to teach you a lot of depends, depends on this, depends on that. And when you run into something, you'll say, oh, okay, now I know I need to do this because mine is not exactly like what he taught me, but he showed me what to do when mine is a little different. So yeah, okay, so um, I know I love getting off the subject, but I'm trying to teach you as much as I can in one video, I don't really like to do part two, part three, part four like that because people's attention spans are really short. So, net. Um, I'm going to mull over what I taught you and then give you my final thoughts and then we're going to end this video. All right, so here we go. Last of it. Frank is going to interact with Joe, okay? So you're going to have Frank and Joe in the panel. Who are Frank and Joe to each other? Are they friends? Are they enemies? What are they talking about? Um, I just lost it. What are they talking about? What's the emotion that you want to show? I think that's, that's it. I should have them probably have them you know, numbered or something on the side. We'll see. Um, where are they? Do I need to show the background? Is this the, the, is this the first page of the book? The first page when you get a book and you open it up, they are going, if it's not the first panel, it's going to be maybe the second or third panel. They're going to show you where they are or where this person's at because you have to have your establishing shot. He is in a boat on the ocean. He is in his bed sleeping. He is hanging off a cliff. You know, your first shot, and I'm, I'm going off, I'm going off camera. Your first shot can be, you know, like this. The guy's hand is like hanging. He's holding on to something, the ledge of, of, of a rock and you know, he's down here and his head is like here. You know, that could be the first panel right there. He's like, oh, please don't. And, you know, it could be cracking or something and a little pieces of rock are falling down. And he's like, no, 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 don't break on me. And uh, so the next shot would be more, let's just say you're at the thing and he's looking up and he's like way up here. This is him. Um holding onto this mountain from, you know, way, way up there. He's one arm, one leg, the other leg, and he's holding onto that, that ledge. So you have that establishing shot of where, where it actually should be above like that. You wouldn't see the, you wouldn't see any of the top. And then this would be, like I said, this, this whole, the, um, the, the, the cylinder again, you would see it would be twisted that way. So you were seeing the bottom of those cylinders like that, except for that arm because that arm is moved. Yeah, so you'd see the bottom of that and the thing could be like way, way up high. You would do a little better job of, you know, showing how high this guy is. So like I said, you have to have an establishing shot because this is just, oh, he's hanging from this cliff. You know, why is he hanging from this cliff? Next shot, the big cliff. and uh, you can have like the city over here or a different planet or something like that. Spaceships, you know, oh, he's on a different planet, you know, from Earth. And, you know, he's hanging off. And then you can have like a dark figure up here, you know, laughing at the guy, whatever. So this is just steps for comic book panels. But as I'm saying with this, back to this. Your two people or your number of people, what are they talking about? What feeling are they con conveying and where are they? Is it important? that you have to show where they are, not, maybe not. You just, these guys are mad at each other. These guys are, are friends. These guys are, are whatever, the boss and the, the um, employer. And you determine that from there. If it's a boss and employer, yes, I would show the guy sitting at his desk, some, some way sitting at his desk. There's a desk, this is back of his chair. His arms are like right there and an employer comes in employee 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 comes in 
And, you know, he could be sweating a little bit. He's like, oh, my gosh, this is the big boss. Am I going to get the job? Am I going to get fired or whatever? So, yeah. And then you have all his degrees on the wall like that. And maybe there's a, just a little hard, little wooden chair, you know, for people to sit in while he chews his tail off. You know, so this is going to be the back of the chair. It's going to be the front of the chair. This is going to be leg here, leg here. And this is a little cheap wooden chair. And you got the, the boss. He's like, come on in, Mr. Jenkins. So by doing that, I've established um, the two people have, are going to have a conversation or the two people um, interacting. Okay, it's the boss and the employee. He, came to, he comes into the office. So it's going to be a tense meeting. And the next shot would probably be like him sweating. So because he's in the office, I, showed, I, I had to show the, the um, office material, the office stuff, office stuff, office furniture or whatever. That means I had to show it. So I had to drop my characters a little bit. And then depending on the amount of the conversation, um, determines the size of the characters. And then the mood, also body language determines that. So like if he's like leaning forward, like he's looking up at the guy and he's leaning, he's like, yeah, come on in here, brother. Come on in here. I got something for you. He's like, come on. I need to talk to you and in his chair and this little hard rickety wooden little chair here and it's hard to kind of show the, the back of the chair and this guy uh, he would probably be like almost leaning backwards, maybe, or his, his, his little hunch in his, his back. So posture shows a lot of um, shows tells a lot of emotion as well. So sometimes it's not like drawing muscles and so forth. You got to show that little bit of posture. As I said, when he was leaning forward, that tells you these guys are about to go in, go at it. Where is it? Right here. These guys are like leaning forward. When I covered it up with the dialogue. Yeah, so I'm not going to go over it again because just rewind the tape and you, you, you'll understand what I'm saying. And then putting a bunch of plaques up here shows that this guy has, you know, numerous awards. It shows like he's really powerful because he's got all these awards and you just put like a little award thing here that people will know because it's framed. Usually if you're big time and you've got something framed and you don't see pictures of a family or something, then you know it's some kind of accomplishment or something like that. And then maybe something on his desk like a phone or something. You just throw that in there. Maybe he's got a, um, what do you call those, the uh, guard for the wall for the chair. Uh, yeah. Interacting with the people. I'm not going to go over again. I'm tempted to say all the little steps again. But yeah, that's going to be it for that. All these steps and, and just practice a lot. Practice, as I said, before you draw your panel, practice, do a lot of thumbnails, find out what's the best angle for you, find out how close you got to be. You already know your dialogue. When I was started out, I used to draw my, I used to see the images first before I did the dialogue. And that one killed me a whole lot because, as I said, I used to do so much detail the grass and the trees and, you know, a little fox hiding behind the, the little thing. And then I covered it up. Somebody was talking somewhere and I ended up covering people's bodies up and so forth. So, yeah, take all that into consideration. So I'm going to leave it at that because I think it's about all I can do with this one. Covered everything. I don't want to go over it again and again. So... Just a quick look at all of the things that you have to take in consideration. And then you just go out there and conquer the world with your stories. 
All right, so that's going to be it for this video. And uh, subscribe again. A lot of people uh, that write me, I, I, I end up saying, I say that to everybody. I leave a message, subscribe, and they write back. I already subscribed, and I thank you for that. I thank you for the, the 17,000, I think it was like 17,400 so far. I'm really happy with that. And uh, I get subscribers every day, one or two or three or five every day. So I'm, I'm continuing happy with that. And tell a friend, tell somebody. If you're an artist, you know an, another artist somewhere tell that person check out this guy's channel he's pretty good all right no rambling i will see you guys in the next class so this class is over and you are dismissed